welcome to another episode of the Anything is Achievable podcast. I'm your host, Jimmy Yen, and I am a licensed acupuncturist and uh, here in Cedar Park, Texas. And topic today is troubleshooting your troubleshooting your health concerns. So we get a lot of questions about how do I start? I've got, you know, um, on, especially on social media, people are asking, where do I start? I've got all these health concerns. I've gone to all these specialists and nobody's really helping me. And how, where do I start? So I'm going to, this video is a video we're going to constantly refer back to. It's a video that you can bookmark, save, and come back to. Um, and I'm going to really simplify what do you need to do to troubleshoot your health concern? Like, who do you trust? One of the big topics we're going to talk about today is who do you trust? Um, and, you know, do, is research really reliable? Because many people think, oh, where's the research? You say, you know, there's many things, especially like on social media right now, people say, oh, do this and they'll solve your diabetes, they'll cure your diabetes, they'll get rid of your neuropathy and so forth. Who do you trust, right? Many people start thinking, um, well, Where's the research, right? And I'm gonna actually give you another insight in regards to research. I love research. Um, I'm, uh, you know, one of my uh, majors was in biochemistry. So we, I did a lot of tests and research and uh, I love research, but is research really reliable, right? Um, I can tell you the short answer is the research is not the Bible. Um, and so what that means is research can be manipulated, research, uh, it is not always reliable, but I still love research and you still can use research. But coming back to, you know, how do you choose if you're problem solving? And one of the things I would like to do is share, let me share my screen and I'm going to share a couple of steps that I really just made simple um, so that everybody can see. Of course, my technology is, let's see, here we go. Let me see if I can do cable. Perfect. All right. There we go. We got it. So research, troubleshooting, uh, not research, but troubleshooting your health concerns, right? How do you choose and who do you trust? Let's say you are struggling with neuropathy. Well, we, you know, our clinic at Achieve Integrative Health in Cedar Park, Texas is, you know, we're neurology specialists in, uh, in, in regards to Chinese medicine, TCM neurology. And so let's say you've got neuropathy, you have no idea what to do, what, you know, you've gone to neurologists, and here's here's a cliff notes version. Neurologists cannot reverse your neuropathy for you, right? Um, neurologists are going to tell you that neuropathy is not reversible. That you can only manage it, right? So who do you trust, right? How do you choose? First thing I recommend is actually go to your friends and family, right? Friends and family members, uh, maybe the ones maybe that you've heard of that have neuropathy, and ask them what's their experience. Is their experience that neuropathy cannot be reversed, right? What if you find someone that one of your friends or family members, they were able to reverse their neuropathy? Now, you know, a lot of the medical uh, uh, institution will say, but where's the research? They may do something that is non-medical, that is against the, uh, um, uh, here in the U.S. American Medical Association, it just against what their belief is, because their definition is neuropathy cannot be re reversed. So anything, anything that says neuropathy or any person, like someone who's suffering, suffering from neuropathy, their neuropathy is reversed, the medical association are going to say, no, that's impossible. You're lying. Right. Um, so anything against it, they're not going to believe. So again, but you know, maybe it's your family member, maybe it's your dad, maybe it's your mom, maybe it's your grandparents. They re they, they got it reversed. So just, just because there's no research, does that mean that your grandparents are lying? Does that mean that your friends are lying, right? I'm not here to answer that question for you. Um, and I'm not against the medical association, right? Um, I love doctors. Some of my best friends are doctors. I am giving you my opinion. This is my opinion. It's not, you know, based off of research. Actually, it's based off of research in our clinic, but it's not based off a double blind study, right? This is my opinion, and I just want to give you the other pieces of the puzzle. Because if you are on this journey, a health journey, to, and you have a chronic illness, most likely you're just given half of the piece of the puzzle, and that's the Western medicine 
perspective. You're not given the rest of the possibilities, right? And so going back to friends and family, find someone who has your condition and they ha they reversed it and ask them what they did. And guess what? Test it out, right? That's what I suggest first, because your friends and family are the people you trust the most. Now, if they're lying to you, that's another whole story, okay? Then don't, you shouldn't be asking them. But your friends and family should be the person that you trust the most, and therefore, they're not gonna lie to you, right? So um, unlike outside people that would lie to you, right? So again, let's focus on you know who to trust. So how do you choose who you trust? What I recommend is you choose your friends, family members that have the same condition that you have and ask them, what did they, what did they do? And they reversed it. What did they do? Right now, let's say you don't have any friends or family. You don't know anybody. Then what's the second option? Well, you go to your trusted sources, right? Everybody's trusted sources are different, right? There are some people um, that will say, if it is not, if there has not been research studies done on a specific treatment, then I'm not going to trust it. And on the other hand is there's going to be some people that are like, oh, I don't really care if there's research done. If there is, great. If there isn't, that's okay also. I trust other people. I'm going to trust my physician. I'm going to trust my acupuncturist. I'm going to trust my chiropractic, naturopath, nurse practitioner, whatever, right? They have, they trust in a, they have a trusted source. So that's what I'm talking about, people, trusted source people. Who do you trust? And what I would suggest, I would add one thing in regards to you choosing the person you trust. The person you trust should not be, or well, I don't think it should be. I, should, I don't think it should be the person that you think has the most information. I don't think it should be the person you think is the, is the most intelligent. What I think you should trust is the person, it could be professional, that has your benefit as number one priority. And it's not their agenda. It's not to prove their agenda. It is removing all of those things. Doesn't matter, you know, they they, they are completely open-minded because they want you to get the best results. That should be your most trusted source right there, right? Because here's the thing, everybody has, many people have an agenda. And for someone to say it is impossible to do something, they have an agenda. They're trying to prove to you that only their way is the right way. So I would look for people who are really put your benefit in front of, of theirs in any institution, their practice, their association, put it, they put the number one thing they're concerned about is reversing your diabetes, reversing your neuropathy, reversing your migraines, right? They're not focused on just saying, hey, let's manage it. Let's manage it so that you can keep on coming back to me. You can keep on taking medications and make the drug companies rich. They're not focused on pleasing another master, right? They're here truly to serve you. They want you to help. They want to help you get rid of your chronic condition so that you are no longer dependent upon something else. And your body returns back to the self-healing machine that God built it to be, right? So if you, if you, it, 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 just think about it. We were all built, our bodies were all built with the ability to heal itself. Something happened between, you know, it was healing itself without drugs, without medication, without supplements, right? Without herbs, it was healing itself by itself. And then we messed it up. So what I would say as a trusted source is someone that can that is focused on restoring you back to that place. Now, again, if you want to take a pill for the rest of your life, you want to take a handful of pills as your breakfast every every day of your life. That's a different story. Then definitely seek sources that do that. There's many sources that will give you that um, information source. Your tra your trusted source is also your information source. Where do you get information? Right. I'll be showing you, I'm going to be showing you some articles, but for example, many people trust Harvard, right? Harvard has a history of, 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 of excellence and many people will trust that, right? Um, you'll be surprised. Uh, some of the research done by Harvard University, Harvard you know, University was paid for 
um, by industry, by big food. So it was manipulated. Now, I'm not saying all Harvard in in Harvard research is incorrect. No, I'm not saying that. Again, trust is source. You know, why did they do the research? Many medical schools these days are funded by pharmaceutical companies. So guess what do they want the, the, the doctors to learn how to do? Prescribe medication, right? And so, again, medication, I'm not against medication. There's a place for medication. Medication can absolutely save your life. Surgery can absolutely save your life. I'm not saying anything against that. Again, some of my best friends are physicians. They prescribe medications. I love them. And so there's a time and place for that. This is not a, a, a podcast to judge. This is a podcast to give you information that maybe you haven't heard, right? Okay, so trusted information source. Where, who do you trust, right? Um, it's hard to know, you know, uh, you know, a lot of times we trust research. We say, oh, research. If you want research, you can go to uh, yourself. You, you don't need to ask anybody else. You can go to PubMed. That's where all the research, you know, are, are listed, right? But here's the thing about research that most people don't know. You need to figure out, before I would, I'll just say, I, before I would trust a research, I would see who's funding the research. Like I said, back then, uh, the sugar industry was funding a research done in Harvard that was trying to prove pe to people that eating fat, all types of fat, even healthy fat, was the cause of cardiovascular disease. This was, it was in the 1960s, I believe. And that's the time when, you know, uh, in the U.S. especially, they were focused on low-fat everything, low-fat diet, low-fat nutrition. You shouldn't eat fat. It's going to clog up your arteries. That's what, you know, and that, uh, contrib that was contributed, that was influenced by that Harvard study. But most people don't know because it's now, you know, how many, 30, 40 years later, people have found out that that research was paid for by the sugar industry. And it's because the people, sugar industry wanted people to eat more sugar. And that's when obesity really start, diabetes really started to increase, right? So again, sugar industry, they're not here for your health, right? They are here to sell more sugary products and sell more sugar. So again, what I would focus on when you're reading a research is who is funding that research, right? And you may say, okay, the National Institute of Health. National Institute of Health uh, is the, uh, the U.S. government uh, agency that funds uh, research. And, and yes, they do. And I'm not trying to be political or anything, so I don't want to get off to the tangent or any type of conspiracy theory. But you got to think about who control who the government controls the National Institute of Health. Therefore, the government dictates, has an influence, maybe not dictates, has an influence on if the NIH, National Institute of Health, what research they are doing, right? then the administration who controls the government, they can absolutely influence what gets researched and the outcome of the research. So as I said, I was, as I, I was a biochemist uh, from the University of Texas at Austin. And as we were doing those research, one change can, can change the results. How you do the research, if you don't do it in, the accurate, in, in a specific way, the, the same way every single time, that will change the results. So during the research that we were doing, I could manipulate the steps to get a result that I desired, right? So why am I saying this? All research can be manipulated. Am I saying all research is manipulated? No, I'm not. But again, this goes back to you, who you trust, your trusted sources, right? So research is great, but like I said, it can be manipulated and it can be false. It can be misleading. So... You have to figure, you have to do due diligence. Yes, it is so hard to do due diligence these days. The news reporting all these fake stuff, um, you know, it's hard. So that, that's why I chose, that's why I said number one. That's why I didn't say research should be number one. Guess what? I said friends and family should be number one because those are the people typically you can trust the most. Okay. So the last one, let's say, okay, yeah, you're like me. Okay. I, I understand. I've read. I found out that some researchers are, are funded by pharmaceutical companies, by supplement companies, by uh, but ba basically uh, interested parties because they want a solution. They want the result that they want and not the, re not the truth, right? So I don't trust anybody. Okay, the last one is your gut, right? You got to go for your gut. 
what is, and I say your values because what are your values? You know, the research, the, the information that's out in the world on, on social media online, what is in alignment with your values? That's, that's what you need to choose from and go with your gut, okay? So let me share with you a couple of what I mean by you know, research uh, is not always accurate. And, and I like to share this story about Louis Pasteur. As being a biochemist, we use a lot of Pasteur flask, right? That was named after Louis Pasteur, an innovator who continues to inspire. And so the reason why I want to bring this up is because a lot of times when we do in our practice with Chinese medicine, um, a lot of the research is not done in, here in the U.S. Therefore, many medical institutions, medical organizations, medical physicians will poo-poo uh, Chinese medicine because research was not done here. They disregard research that is done outside of the U.S., in Europe, in Asia, even though there's thousands, hundreds of thousands of research done in Asia on Chinese medicine and how effective it is. But because it wasn't done in the U.S., the U.S. Medical Association usually poo-poo's it and says, oh, that's they, they didn't do it correctly, right? But that's a whole other story. But my point is, let me share with you this story of Louis Pasteur. So some of y'all who... Or if you're a chemist or a microbiologist, you have heard of his name, Louis Pasteur. Again, the flask that we use is named after him. It's Pasteur flask, right? So his work found new ways to preserve our food, revolutionize healthcare, and has potentially saved millions of lives, right? So a lot of our science, our so-called research, our scientific scientific principles are based off this guy, Louis Pasteur, right? But guess what? When he came up with his theories in the beginning, he was shunned by his by physicians in the medical association. See, the medical establishment famously ridiculed him. Think about that. So when he came up with an idea that actually worked and, and, and actually was true, the current medical association, the current physicians back then were criticizing him, ridiculing him. But now, fast forward to 2024, we use the stuff that he created and found. See, 1885. What was, let's see, when was this? 1822. He was born in 1822. So around 1885, in the 1800s. We are using what he discovered in 1800s, what back then physicians were saying the same thing they are saying about Chinese medicine or any other type of medicine that physicians and medical so. Uh, U.S. medical institutions poo-poo now. They were saying, Pastor, you're a joke. You know, what you're saying is incorrect. Where's the research? Where's the scientific data? Where's the study? They were saying all the same things, right? And I'm just bringing this up. But what we use, he is called the godfather of immunology. Your immune system, that came from Louis Pasteur. But back then, the medical, so my point is, just because the medical association is poo-pooing Chinese medicine right now here in the U.S. does not make it make them right. That's why I said, remember, the, how do you choose who to trust? You go to your friends and family, right? I actually had a, a side note. Um, I was doing a social media post, and I was sharing some of the results that we get in our clinic from our patients, actual patients. And they, we have video testimonials and so forth of them showing the results. But Facebook hired an outside source medical investigator to prove me wrong. And the, the, the email they said was, where's the scientific proof? I said, my, the scientific proof is my patients. Look at their data. But because it wasn't done here in the U.S., it wasn't done like a science, it wasn't done in, in, in a double blind study or a scientific study. They were saying that that's not proof. So they were saying the same thing with Louis Pasteur. Oh, Louis Pasteur said, oh, look at this. I, I Look at my experiments. Look at what I did. Oh, no, no. It wasn't done according to our standards. So that's not true. But fast forward to 2024. He is a godfather of immunology. And he created pasteurization. Whether I agree with pasteurization or not is not the point here. The point is he created something that we use today that the medical association 
laughed at, ridiculed him. So again, do your own due diligence, follow your own gut, follow your own values. Stop trusting just anybody and everything. That is, you know, especially people who are not here for your benefit. <clears throat> so thankfully, Louis Pasteur, rather than give in to his ridicule, he persevered and be began devising experiments that would help him attain proof of his theories uh, in 1864. Uh, he presented his uh, findings that backed the germ theory. He came up, he was one of the founding fathers of the germ theory, that we have these, all these organizations we can't see, right? until the microscope was discovered. So again, people knew that there was germs, but because the medical institution could not see it, and they could not see, other people saw it, but they could not see it, so they poo-pooed it. So again, now I'm not saying the medical association is bad. That's not what I'm saying. Again, many of my my best friends are physicians. I love them. Uh, my actually my older sister is a physician. My brother-in-law is a is a physician. He's a urologist. My fam my sister is a family physician. So I love physicians, right? And I'm not. It's the same thing. Even with acupuncturists and Chinese medicine doctors. Not all Ch Chinese medicine doctors are good, right? So in every profession, what I'm saying is, you have to pay attention to who you're listening to. Instead of just poo-pooing it, just based because oh, so and so met, uh, said said some my physician said acupuncture is voodoo, so it is voodoo. Well, have you ever experienced it? Has your physician ever experienced it? Have they ever gone through a treatment course? No, many of the physicians that poo-poo it have never done it. Right. Here's another example: Paul Zoll. He was a cardiologist in the 1950s. Right, he right here. He came up with the def he he was the founding, right? Uh, I would say uh, it was the in inspiration to uh, where is it says right here the defibrillator. He developed the first defibrillator and heart monitor. But back then he was in the army. He was like, hey, I'm going to shock the heart. And everybody was like, see, yet the medical community had pay, paid this invention little heed. The medical, he was like, hey, I observed something. I saw something. And they were saying, hey, Dr. Zoll, no, but I don't care what you saw. <laughs> you don't have scientific proof. You don't have research done. So what you saw is, it, it, it is a myth, right? So again, who are you talking to? If you are talking to providers, healthcare providers that are poo-pooing other medicines that they have zero experience, zero knowledge, zero, uh, 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 actually, I'll put it back on them, zero research into the, I would walk away from that provider. Because that provider is more focused on their own ego than they are to helping you. A opened a open-minded provider will number one have humility and understand that what they do just like what i do chinese medicine we can't fix everything if your provider thinks that what they do can fix everything walk away if your provider you want a provider that says hey i know what i do what other the other other types of treatments and uh that are out there in the world that i don't know about I'm not going to criticize them because I don't know what the, what it is. I've never done it, never studied it, right? And so that's the type of trusted source that I would say you should seek after. So these are just, there's so many examples of, there's just so many examples of, you know, the, I showed you Dr. Zoll and Louis Pasteur because they are physicians within their own, you know, so it's physicians criticizing other physicians, because if I just bring, you know, like I've said, I bring other Chinese medicine doctors, then you already have a prejudice against Chinese medicine doctors. So you're not going to listen to what I'm saying. So again, that's why I shared Zoll, Dr. Zoll, cardiologist and a microbiologist, uh, Louis Pasteur. So again, this, tr this really video, this podcast is really about helping you choose on how to, who, how to choose, how to choose who to trust 
and where to get your medical information, your trusted source, and how to help you make a decision so that you will be able to live a better quality life and a longer life if that's what you desire. I hope this was helpful. I will always refer back. Some For some people, this may be boring. And some of you are like, hey, Jimmy, just tell me where to where to push on my on my body to get rid of, of my migraines, right? Um, I have videos for that. You can follow us on social media. Uh, if you're not following this channel, subscribe to this channel. Uh, but yeah, any questions, you can always reach out, type into the comments and we'll get to them as much as we can. Hope you enjoyed this information um, and uh, we'll see you on the next podcast.